Hi, I'm Ben Mullen from the Biodiversity Information Service, the local environmental record centre for Powys and the Brecon Beacons National Park. I'm in Langorse today to meet Norman Lowe. You can see him in the background pottering around with various moth traps. And I'm here to meet up with Norman to have a look at the various types of moth traps that are available and to look what might be inside the moth trap that was set up last night. Hello, I'm Norman Lowe. I'm a county moth recorder for Breckenshire. And I want to talk to you about catching moths, particularly in moth traps like this. This is the Skinner moth trap. And it's one that's been used for many years. I use it in my garden, I have used it in my garden for about 20 years now. And you can see the moths are attracted by ultraviolet light, which is on this, in this tube here. And they very often bounce against these perfect dust sheets and down into the trap. Once they're in the trap, they rest on egg boxes inside. The next morning you come and op open the trap to find out what's there. If you want to go moth trapping away from your garden, it's a very good idea to use a smaller trap, one powered by a battery, like this lithium ion battery here. This kind of trap is called the, the heat trap. And as you can see, the ultraviolet light is vertical this time, and there are little baffles here that the moth hits when it comes in and drops in, inside the trap and again it rests on the egg boxes. Right, this is the Robinson trap. It's rather like a round enlarged version of the heat trap. As you can see it's got a perspex funnel here and you put the, the electrics in, fit in there and the moths again go inside the trap and rest on the egg boxes. Usually this is powered by a, a very powerful um, ultraviolet lamp called the mercury vapour lamp and that brings in large numbers of moths. A good way of catching moths is a moth trap using ultraviolet light and this is my moth trap. It's called a Skinner type of trap and it has the ultraviolet bulbs here. I like to put my trap in a sheltered place, sheltered from the wind and very often beside a hedge as well because the moths like to fly along hedge lines I find. That's why I put my trap in this corner of the garden. There are different types of moth trap. This is the Skinner type. There's also a heat trap, which is a smaller one and more, more portable with, with use of batteries. And there are, there are, um, there's also the Robinson trap, which is a, a bigger one, and which very often uses a mercury vapor tube. That's even brighter than the, the actinic tubes, which these are. <laughs> it's important to remember that moths, when they are attracted to your trap, they need somewhere to rest overnight. And so you put in egg boxes. Egg boxes have the property that they've got rough edges inside and the moths seem to like to rest on those rough edges. You open the trap like this and put the egg boxes in. Everybody has their own special way of putting in egg boxes. I have one made at the bottom like this. second layer then I put a second layer here and then a third layer of dangle and out And the same on the other side. And this is the one that I tried, I set last night. I'm going to see what's inside the trap now. So, if you'd like to come with me, let's have a look and see what we can find. You can't always expect to get moths. Sometimes you don't get anything at all. And it was very cold last night, so I'm a little bit worried there might be nothing at all. But there's nothing there. And on this one, there's nothing. But we keep going, and you never know, we might find something. Nothing on there. This is what happens in cold weather, I'm afraid. If 
but a very cold May. Still no moths. I hope we're not going to have a completely blank night and blank morning. That would be awful. So it looks like on this side not a single moth. Oh dear, no moths at all. Let's try the other side. Right, let's try the second side now, see if we can find anything here. There's a mosquito of some kind. Nothing at all. This is getting worrying. No. No, still no moss, I'm afraid. It's not always easy looking for wildlife, is it? Just a minute. What's this? What is this? We have a moth. We have a poplar hawk moth. That makes it all worthwhile somehow, doesn't it? Can you see how it's trying to make itself look like a bunch of dead leaves to avoid being eaten? It's got very yellow, creamy looking antennae. It does. Is that one of the bigger moths? It's certainly one of the biggest moths you like to see, yes. All the hook moths are generally quite large. The last egg box, is it going to be anything else? No, I'm afraid not. One moth, I'm afraid. There we are. It was a nice one, wasn't it? Not a very good catch last night, but still a rather nice moth did turn up. The poplar hawk moth? Poplar hawk moth. And I guess that's called poplar hawk moth because it breeds on poplar trees. The caterpillar feeds on the leaves of poplar trees and also sallow and willow. So it will lay its eggs on the willow, poplar, and then the caterpillars then eat that tree. That's right. Shall we let it go? Yeah. I like to put my moths from the trap into a hedge where they can't be eaten by birds. If you disturb it, it will show its red hind wings. That's to frighten predators, thinking their big eyes are something dangerous. Right. Well, I'd like to tell you about some moths that you might like to find in late May, in their usual year anyway. They were a bit late this year. My name is Norman Lowe, and I'm going to tell you about some of these common moths. And the first one is the flame shoulder. Now, this can fly at almost any time of the year. I had one last week and uh, even had them in December, but they're certainly flying now. That's the flame shoulder. Each of these or most of these are on egg boxes and, and it's as you would find in your moth trap. So you can see the flame shoulder sitting on the egg box, just come out of the moth trap. The next one is a very commonest moth of all probably, certainly the macro moths, it's called the heart and dart. I haven't seen one that, yes, this year, but they should be flying very soon and you might have lots and lots in your trap. On the left hand side, you can see the moth, the moth as it normally sits. And you can see the heart-shaped heart mark. Can I use my, there we are, the heart-shaped mark and the dart-shaped mark. That's why it's called the heart and dart. But the way you usually see it in the egg box is sitting, facing you, hiding inside the little crevices of the egg box. And you can see its eyebrows there. That, that shows you that's going to be heart and dart. When it comes out, it'll look like that. The brimstone moth is another moth that flies at most times of the year. It certainly flies early in the spring and flies throughout the summer and even into the autumn. That's one again that I've had this year and this again is sitting on the, uh, on the egg box. You can see why it's called the brimstone moth because it's got the colour of brimstone, the yellow colour of brimstone or sulphur. And of course, there's a brimstone butterfly with the same colour. 
Now we come to the ermine moths. You can see why this is called a white ermine, because it's white and it's got the ermine, the black and white markings of the ermine stole that the lords of the peers of the realm wear around their necks, on their shoulders. That's the white ermine. The caterpillar of the white ermine is uh, one of these furry caterpillars, as are as all of its relatives. So the white ermine, because it's white. The buff ermine, because it's buff. It's not a very good picture, but you can see the colour of it. You can see it sitting on an egg box. And the third ermine type moth you get is the muslin moth. And you could almost call that the black ermine. Although the female muslin moth is white as well. These are both males. I particularly like the, uh, the muslin moth when you turn it over because it looks really jolly underneath with its apparently eyes. Under these aren't really the eyes. The eyes are tiny little dots in there. But these look like almost like spectacles. And it's, it's jolly little yellow legs and uh, stripe on the abdomen. It's a very attractive little moth. And that's certainly flying this time of year, though I haven't had it yet. I've included the silver wire because it's not particularly a spring flying moth, but you get it any time of year because it's a migrant moth. And this one comes in particularly on southwesterly, southeasterly winds. When you have southerly winds, you very often see the silver wire. The first generation comes around about now in smaller numbers when they breed in Britain, and then the second generation is really, really common in September and October, or even earlier than that, not in August. The silver Y, it's called a silver Y because it has that mark there, which is a upside down Y and it's silver, so it's the silver Y. There's also a golden Y, a plain golden Y, and a beautiful golden Y. That's a silver Y. Another jolly moth, I think, is the pale tussock. This one's particularly hairy somehow, and particularly when you look at it it's head on, it's very, very furry. Again, this should be flying this time of year, but I still haven't had one yet in my trap. But it's very much a May flying moth. Then we come to the, oops, too many, the hawk moths. And these, I think, are flagship species to me. These are the ones that people see and they get them interested in moths. The poplar hawk. And that's the one moth I did have in my garden, in my garden trap this, this morning. Only one moth overnight, and it was a popular hawk. And the other hawk moth, which you saw briefly before, is the elephant hawk moth. That's another flagship species. People see this and think it's such a wonderful moth, which it is, and they phone me up and get it, start getting interested in moths. Not only the moth itself, but the caterpillar is also a, a flagship species because it looks a bit like a snake, and people see it in their gardens and, and ring me up and say, what have I got here? So I like the elephant hawk for that reason. So those are some of the moths that you might see in May at this time of year, and probably more commonly in June this, this year because we're so late.